Stop your giggling and stop your jiggling and stop your grinning and grab your linen. Uh, hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave. I am crossing some things off my list today. And here's a little shop infrastructure built that was brought about by a uh, tested viewer, Lee Marsh. Lee Marsh recently sent me a Boldy Linen watchmaker's lathe, and I have been kidding it out and playing with it, and it's been really, really fun. One of the pieces of equipment that came with the lathe was this. And I was like, what is this thing? It sits on the lathe bed. And uh, well, actually, when I first saw it, sorry, it just looked like this. I think it's a little more obvious, especially given the title of this video, what this is all about. Uh, this comes out. But so it's just, this is this object. And I was like, what is this for? And then I looked it up and this is a sensitive drilling rig. Because, boy, let's go over to my tail stop. Well, go here. Okay, so this is the tail stock of my lathe here. And when I want to drill using it, I put a, put a drill chuck like this in it. I put a drill chuck in it. And I can affect the drill like this, right? I turn this handle, the drill comes out. I turn it the other way, the drill comes back. This is the primary way I drill, one drills on a lathe. Now there are some other philosophies about drilling on a lathe. Stefan Gotzaventer likes to uh, drill from the carriage, um, which I think is brilliant. Uh, and I've been working on that one. But in a watchmaker's lathe, you don't want to be sitting there going mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, as you're drilling. And so, wait, let me grab this thing. And so that's where this thing comes in. It is, it, it functions the same way as the tailstock in that it comes in and out like that, but gives you a touch, gives you a feel. And that's actually one of the common complaints about the tailstock of a lathe is with small, small stuff, it's difficult to get a feel. I'll just point out. When you have a uh, Chuck E, sorry. When you have a drill chuck that's as big as this, and it's just normal size keyless chuck, and a drill bit this big, and you are trying to, let me tell you that the feel of drilling is really important so that you don't shatter your bit or break them inside of a thing you're drilling. And this thing weighs like two and a half pounds, and this drill bit probably weighs less than a dollar bill. I'm not joking. So feel is really important. And this is a brilliant way to give one feel on a jeweler's lathe. Okay. With that established, I found myself wondering, can I uh, build one of these for my lathe? I thought, yes, I can. And then I went looking just to see what existed out there. And lo, I'm debating whether or not to take you back over to the workbench. Yeah, let's go back over there. Oh, it's a Dutch angle. There we go. Um, so I was thinking maybe I should make one of these for myself. And then I went looking and see what, seeing what's available. And I found this. Whew which is pretty much exactly what I was looking for, made out of steel, uh, you know, clearly made quickly and cheaply, but still potentially very useful to me because it has all the parts that I needed. Uh, only problem is this has a Morse two taper and my tailstock takes a Morse four taper. Uh, the technical term would be an MT2 versus an MT4. They make taper adapters. but I didn't have one. And I thought, oh, you know what? I'd like to maybe make one. So I bought an MT4 taper with a soft steel end, and I'm going to drill this out, give it a, a Morse 2 taper, and then I'm gonna pop this in it, and this will be my sensitive drilling rig for uh, my lathe. Yeah, I'm gonna do a few other things too. I'm going to clean this up, make it operate a little bit smoother, 
it's a little crunchy. I feel some resistance here and there. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put a new handle on it just because I think there's a better looking handle it could live with. Uh, and yeah, we're going to cross this off. I've been sitting next to my lathe for months waiting for me to take care of this project. All right, let's get to it, little spoon. All right, this is, this is not gonna be the most satisfying build for you, for me, for us. It's not gonna be a long build. I did, but I, I did some things. I rounded the corners on these. I, I went with a, uh, I went with a eighth inch bar and a new hole in the center stalk specifically because I was, frankly, because the slot in this thing is not cut in the center. You can see that that side's smaller than that side. So there's a little bit of racking going on with this. It's fine. It's fine for right now. Fine for me to determine if this is useful for me in my shop. And I'm not going to go much further. I put in a new cap here. This is Bakelite. Oh, I love it. Um, and so now I'm going to basically, uh, I'm going to turn this into an MT2 receiver. I'm going to drill it out with this and then I'm going to ream it out with this Morris tapered to reamer. Yeah, that's for real. Here we go. Oh, usually I'm showing what's happening here at the headstock, but on this one, I only need to show you what's going on on the tailstock because the tailstock is what we're, what we're mucking with. So here's my blank. And yeah. There's my blank. That's lovely. So now the question is how to drill that out. I'm going to drill that out by chucking this. I uh, recently adjusted the concentricity on this to be quite high at right around this radius. Uh, we are going to I'm going to make sure we get some extreme concentricity on this. The reason it's worth it. is because every bit that I'm off on the concentricity on this is going to throw off what I'm actually trying to make. And so, uh, oh, this is, this is a true set chuck, which means I can adjust its concentricity to a very high degree uh, by adjusting these four uh, bolts. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it until I get zero throw out on this. And that will tell me that this thing is turning perfectly on center. And it has to, if I'm going to drill a nice concentric hole. So let's get this uh, zeroed in. And let's see how much run out we have. Not a lot. Not a ton. About one and a half thou of run out. So that's on zero. That's one and a half thou out. 
that's on zero. That's on zero. And that's on zero. So it's really about that one. Okay. There it is. It's turning on center. Great. Full length, the full Monty, I guess.
I see. I see how I need to do this. Let's try this. Well, that did it. That got a Morse taper into my Morse taper. Yo, dog, I heard you like Morse tapers. Um, look, I really could have bought an M2 to M4 adapter. They exist. I know, but I wanted to have fun today. So between this and this, if we still have up and down concentricity, <laughs> Oh, what? What the? What the? I went too deep? As I didn't even know it was possible to go too deep. What do you mean? What the? What the? All right. I didn't even consider the possibility that I could go too deep. So I have to chop a little bit off the, uh, the end of this, apparently, is what I'm going to have to do. So I'm going to have to chuck it in the other way, like this, and do a cutoff moment on it. All right.
Great. All right, moment of truth. Second moment of truth. How many first moments of truth haven't come to fruition here on this channel? Many. Here comes the moment of truth. We're going to pop. Oh. Let's see how good our concentricity is. I will be honest with you. I sort of wonder if this is actually going to be concentric when it gets all the way out to the end, the business end of this. That's a, that's a lot to ask of a thing. Still, for some kinds of applications, this makes total sense for me to have this sort of sensitivity. Yeah, it's off that way, this way. Let's just see this little tap tap brings it home. Three more, three tapers. Three tapers all trying to come to a head here. That's dead on the money. It's maybe a couple foul out that way. All right. Did I say this was going to be a disappointing one day build? It is just a little bit. Look, I've got. I got a Jacob's Chuck. I got that's Jake. I got a JT, whatever that is, two, three. I got an MT4 and an MT2. I don't know. I felt something. That was mostly uh, an exercise in futility. I, three tapers all trying to meet. The fact that I'm only 20 thou out of concentricity is like, it's to be expected. Um, this was a nice education. I have not uh, reamed a taper before. Uh, I will tell you that as I was reaming, I was checking against the mill and I was maintaining concentricity. I know you can ream, you could potentially go off angle, but I, I wasn't, or it, just, it doesn't appear that I went off angle there, that it's just too many tapers all the way out. Plus, I mean, look, I didn't, I didn't spend a ton of dough on this, maybe 50 bucks, 60 bucks, something like that. Um, when you want to do sensitive drilling on the mill, you use something like this, a Jacobs Zero Chuck. Uh, yeah, this is a JT Zero. Actually, I think this is a knockoff JT Zero. Oh, it is. Um, however, so this chucks into your mill and you do this business. Now, the fact that it's rigid helps. And so maybe I'm, what I'm considering is maybe getting a second one of these um, Morse taper MT4 blanks, because this one's spent. Um, getting a second MT4 blank and putting this in it to do my sensitive drilling.
I think the primary difficulty I'm having here is that um, I don't have a need for this. I'm trying to build something and I don't know what I'm using it for. I thought the idea was pretty cool and I love the idea of the sensitive milling attachment or, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I may play further. The other issue is that this and this, these are from China, they're not steel. They're not steel, actually, they're iron. They're cast iron. They look like steel. They're not. Um, and that's leading to some, yeah, they're not hardened, so they're super soft. So every dent matters. And that may be also part and parcel of it. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of just me literally spinning my wheels for, I don't know, half hour, 20 minutes. Thank you guys for joining me for this Sisyphean. No location, no destination one day build. I'll see you next time. Boop. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick my measuring forearm uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.